Matt, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today, and congratulations on the new year. Thank you very much. Uh, now, starting off, we get to see a lot of new shades of Laszlo this season, right. especially you as a father. What, yeah. what excited you the most as a performer to kind of get to see these new angles, these new shades to this character? Well, it's, it's always fun to do something that you haven't done before. Um, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter what that is, you know, it's always good fun. It could be anything. You know, they could turn me into like a rabbit or something, you know, it'd be, it would be just as fun. And then one of my favorite parts about Lazo, who honestly is my favorite character in the show, uh, is he loves random pieces of humanity. Right. He loves Sean. He loves the Property Brothers this year. He yeah. loves the volleyball team. Yeah. Like, what do you think is it about those things? What bits of human culture well, speak no, to him? I don't think it's. I mean, he's an you know he's an enthusiast. So and he's intrigued by life. I mean, he was given a second chance hundreds of years ago, you know, when it sort of made the most of that and kind of grabs hold of everything. I have time to slip in one more. Yeah. Uh, what excited you about getting to play with Mark this year in such a different light than you well, have to I didn't, I didn't. Um, it was people with dots on their faces. And um, yeah, so I didn't, <laughs> is the short answer. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much and genuinely congrats on the new year. Cheers, thanks very much. Mate. All right, so this year takes everybody kind of in a new direction. There's a lot of love in the air. Even if it's not necessarily all romantic, some of it might be, but like yeah. a lot of fatherly love, a lot of men, like Mandor even being a little bit more open about it. Why was it important for you all to take these characters in that direction this year? Well, I think the heart of the show is that these characters are a family. I think like from the surface, they are just like a bunch of insane vampire roommates who are cohabitating. But I think the heart of the show and really what is, I think the thing that draws us all to it is they really just are... A family. It's a family sitcom, and I think the heart of it is always there, and I think now we're just sort of excavating it all the more, so I think this was kind of, like, inevitable that this kind of dynamic was always going to surface. Now, this is something I've been wondering since the first year. These characters are almost all unrepentant murderers, but they're all so charming and goofy and fun and loving in so many ways. How do you find the balance of, like, we want to let them be monsters, but lovable? Like, how is that to find? I think vampires are interesting because they are such a metaphor for the human experience in that way, or at least are vampires, that they are sort of monstrous and have this dark side out of sometimes necessity, out of sometimes pleasure, but I think at the end of the day, like they do, you know, because they've lived for so long, like ultimately have this very specific perspective on life. Um, so yeah, I, again, I think it's just a metaphor for the human experience, man. We're all monsters, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, in different ways, yes. And Maybe then, some of us are not drinking the blood of other people. Yeah, but some of us also, some you know, some of us cook very weird stuff. Uh, and if I could slip in one last one, because I know, yeah, I know you've got the next two years already kind of set up. You've got all the Emmy nominations. Was it like as a creative to be able to kind of know, like most shows don't have that confidence, don't have that ability to be like, I know we're coming back for two years. What is that like as a creator to have it? Is it freeing? Is it almost terrifying? What is that like? I feel like it's kind of scary, but really exciting for the show. I think ultimately, like we we just wanted to make a show that was funny and silly and was sort of an escape for us in terms of like the humor. Um, and just like the, the world that we were creating and then the Taika and Jermaine had created as well, which we were so lucky to step into. So I think if anything, looking back all these years, it's just like, it's, we're just so lucky. So lucky. Well, we're all very lucky to have it because this is honestly one of the funniest shows on thank TV. Thank you so much. I really uh, appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you. So thank nice you. To meet you. Uh, honestly, uh, huge fan of the new year. Uh, you had a weird experience, I have to imagine, with this year considering, you know, the whole of it, the whole baby of oh, it all. Oh, dear Lord, I didn't even see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what was that, What when you found out that that was going to be the direction for you this year and for, this, for Craig Robinson as a character, what was your response? What were you thinking? Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's terrifying at first. Babies have ruined a lot of good TV shows. Um, but I knew that the writers are so smart. And our show is such a, you know, in, in, in the world of fantasy that you can kind of do anything like a cartoon. So, you know, I was really happy that it was going to breathe new life into the character. So and it, it honestly, do, literally does. Oh, he's, yeah. he's like a new infant character. Yeah. Like, and especially, like, I love the interplay with you and Laszlo. Like, you and Matt, like, after last season, you had the kind of the buddiness, the friendship, the exploring. And now it's shifted into a completely different kind of element. Like, what's... I know you weren't on set with Matt, <laughs> obviously, because right. uh, you're not a child. But uh, what was that like to kind of get to explore and play with? 
Uh, it was really interesting. Um, a lot of what I did was green screen, and sometimes I would come in uh, on to set and we would do some, you know, talking and discussing, but a lot of it was green screen. And so having, figuring out improvisation after something's already set in stone was a challenge. Um, and then figuring out, well, how do I improvise in a child? How would Colin Robinson as a child react to this or say to that without being cute? My, all I wanted was not to be cute. So I think that becomes more apparent as he gets a little older. He's so perfectly annoying. <laughs> He's so annoying. Like, I mean that as a compliment. It is a compliment. That was honestly my goal. I didn't want him cute. I wanted him to still be annoying. Fantastic. Mark, thank you so much for taking the thank time. Thank you. And honestly, huge round of Oh, thank you so much. Take care. Uh, congratulations on the new season. Thank you. Uh, the guide for a character whose name we don't actually quite know yet gets a lot of depth this year. What kind of excited you the most when you kind of saw what you were going to get to do with the character? Oh, well, I love that we got to dip into her backstory because I wanted to know myself, like, where did she come from? And that I love that that her job working for the Vampire Council was her punishment and she had no idea because she'd been doing it for so long. Um, so that was really fun. Is, now, one of the things I do love, if we get a little bit of the guide getting outside this year even, because we see her go off with Narja, kind of getting to be paired off with her a lot. Is there anywhere in particular that you want to see the guide? Is there, you want because I want to see the guide at 7-Eleven, trying to figure out. That. Yeah, I was just, yeah, I would love to see her out in the world a little more, like, even on, like, um, yeah, 7-Eleven's a great idea. I think she could be on, like, a movie set, but it would have to be at night. So, yeah. I, Guillermo, uh, no, Harf, not Guillermo, Harvey in, uh, <laughs> came on and I were talking recently about sending you all to Disneyland, which I would still think would be hilarious. About what? Uh, sending you all to Disneyland and just letting oh, the chaos run. Yeah, that would have to be Disneyland at night. Exactly. It's kind of the vampire Disney. Yeah. Which they <laughs> do open at night, I, I heard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, last question. Uh, you get so much time now with, you've gone time with Laszlo, you've gone so much time with Naja. How much do you want to, like, who do you want to be paired with going forward a bit more? Is there any of the four main characters, or five main characters, really, that you want to see the guy really get thrown together with and just flung off somewhere? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, cause I got to do stuff with Laszlo, lots with Naja, a little bit with Guillermo. Yeah, maybe some more with, um... oh, now I'm forgetting everything. Not Kate Ryan. What's Kevon's character? Nandor. Nandor. Nandor and, and Colin Robinson. <laughs> so this season takes a bit of a turn to the Vampire Club. Oh, yeah, it does. As, yeah. as a director, what excites you about this getting this, this setting, getting to throw these characters into this kind of location and have so many elements and things? Like, I'm still losing it over the Union bit. <laughs> oh, man, the Wraith Union? Yeah, yeah, that's great. I mean, it's just the... The in and outs of actually like running a nightclub are not incredibly dramatic. Um, and I think that's why it works so well because they're one, it sounds so cool, but then you're kind of like, oh, you're stuck with the burden of, of like booking the stage and like getting like acts in here and spending money and looking at the books. And, and that's not the shit that I know they want to do. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Them wanting to do Blade. They just wanted the Blade. I know, I know. Just to want to be as cool as the movies that they've seen about their kind is fantastic. Well, now you guys are under the Disney umbrella, technically. Who knows? We could see a Blade show up. Wow, that's true. That's true. You never know when you start dealing with that. That's right. And you guys have had so many other cameos, too. Yeah. Uh, now, I should actually get back to the interview part of this interview. Uh, <laughs> Um, something I'm fascinated by, especially with episode four, which we won't get too much into because I don't want to spoil anybody who hasn't seen it yet. Uh, you get a really fun fight scene. You get the you get you get the brawl, and it's a really really well choreographed, well directed fight. That's also still really really funny. Like, how do you find the balance between those two without losing track of one or the other? Well, I have to give the flowers to the director of that episode, Yana Gorskaya, who is really fantastic with, uh, just has a knack for action comedy. And myself, I come from that background as well. 
So I've done my fair share of funny stunts and fights and, and all that. And we have a fantastic second unit that comes in and, and choreographs the fights. Um, so there's a lot of minds on it, you know? There's a lot of minds working on a project like that to make it, uh, first off, to make it doable, you know what I mean? And second, to make it funny. And then third, how do you cut it to make it its funniest? And that was a big fight. That was that took them like a while to shoot. I remember. I think they were out on that for like two days, two or three days. Yeah. And it is, and it's it's shown in the put. It's there. You see it. It's fantastic. Well, and then you just commit to it because you're like, this is hilarious. This needs to be in it. So we're gonna do whatever it takes to make this stay. <laughs> you know, this is we're gonna do the best we can. Uh, so gotta start it off. Guillermo is the hardest working mom in Staten Island, isn't he? It's a, it's a job and someone's got to do it. It just really kind of makes you realize how hard it is to just to raise a child. And raise a child if you're a single parent is even harder. But raising a child with a, a house full of vampires and a, and a familiar who doesn't have children of their own is even more hard. <laughs> and I think this season has really kind of shown us that uh, it takes a village to raise a child. And it really does. And it's uh, what is nature over, you know, what do they say, Na nurture over nature? or nurture over nature or whatever. Um, it's just, uh, it really does prove that point. It's like, what is a child if not what you tell them? And they're sponges and they absorb everything. And I think uh, this year we show that with shadows that sometimes Colin Robinson is not necessarily born into that pattern. He might have been made. So we find out if that's true or not. <laughs> Now, kind of speaking to that a little bit of like, Guillermo has always had moments of like, I need to leave, I know this is toxic, I need to leave, I need to leave. And I don't know if he ever really could because he loves them too much and they love, and Nandor at least loves him back. It's just crazy because, you know, I think that sometimes you like, you know, side with your capture Stockholm Syndrome. So, so much as he loves the cast and he loves the crew, you know, uh, the crew of the documentary crew and he loves the cast, which is his, his uh, roommates, he really kind of has to put himself first for the first time in 13 years. And I think that that just goes to show how much compassion human beings have for each other and how we lead with empathy, that we do love each other. And as much as these vampires are such dicks to him and such you know jerks to him, he, at the end of the day, will massacre a theater full of vampires for them to prove that he loves them and that they are his chosen family. That is so sweet. Now, I want to talk about fighting real quick. If I got time for one more, I want to talk about fighting and murder. Uh, so we've seen this year how well, you can handle your Guillermo can handle his own against Nandor. But let's say hypothetically, Laszlo and Nadja come after him. How do you think he's going to manage to do? I mean, he's more powerful than we think. More, and the more we find out about Guillermo, also he was overseas for a year in London and came back with like, which you quickly see in the next couple episodes, with new kind of combat techniques that we did not know existed in him. And so he is, he is stronger and more powerful than we think. He's defeated Nandor before. And he is probably the most powerful vampire, aside from Colin Robinson, who's now an infant child. So technically, there's no threat in the house to him anymore. He can overcome any power in the house right now, which is a pretty scary and powerful position to put him in. So I'm looking forward to it. And definitely this year, we kind of take the stunts to the next level with Tig, our stunt director. He's amazing. It's going to be out of this world. I'm so excited for everyone to see the Night Markets episode. It's so good. I have seen it. It is fantastic. It it's so yeah, good. Yeah. Harvey, again, congratulations Thank on the new year. Thanks so much. It's good seeing you. Good seeing you.